This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, June the 12th, 2019. It's the memorial of the 108 martyrs of World War II, a.k.a. the 108 blessed Polish martyrs. They were beatified by Pope St. John Paul II, and they consist of three bishops, 52 priests, three seminarians, 26 male religious, eight female religious, and nine lay people, including Mariana Birnaka, who offered her life in exchange for that of her pregnant daughter-in-law, thus saving the life of her grandchild. Most of these martyrs were killed in Dachau. It's important to remember that only about a third of the people that were killed by Hitler were Jews. They were surely targeted especially, but so were the Romani, also known as the Gypsies. And as the Nazis gained power, they expected everyone to support them, not just to tolerate them. The big group who wouldn't play ball were the Catholic intelligentsia and the clergy. Priests and nuns were scooped up all over Germany and Poland for refusing to support Nazi ideology. It started with made-up names and insults like Judenschwein or Jew lover, And then students of history will notice the same patterns of language like homophobe and climate denier today. Then they were refused the right to publish books and newspaper columns. Then their businesses were vandalized and boycotted. Again, it's the same kind of patterns we see in our modern day. Ultimately, these 108 martyrs weren't just random people who got on the wrong side of the SS. They were religious people taking religious action against the Nazis, and they died for their efforts. Today in 1963, in a parallel event, Medgar Evers was murdered in front of his home in Jackson, Mississippi. He was a civil rights activist working to organize the black community to secure voting rights and to provide education and work opportunities in central Mississippi. Evers was a veteran of World War II and a college graduate. Byron De La Beckwith, a member of the Ku Klux Klan and of the White Citizens Council, which was formed to resist racial integration of schools, shot Evers in his driveway. Tragically, the all-white jury was hung and De La Beckwith was released. It took Merle Evers, Medgar's widow, nearly 30 years to get that man convicted, and De La Beckwith ultimately died in prison in 2001. Medgar Evers was buried with military honors at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C., and his death was a rally cry, especially in his home state of Mississippi. It would be four years to the day after his death that the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Loving v. Virginia that any law which forbade interracial marriage was fundamentally unconstitutional. In a rare unanimous decision, the High Court overturned their own 1883 decision in Pace v. Alabama. From today onward, in 1967, there could be no racial limitation upon marriage. And finally today in 1994, one of the most bizarre media frenzies in modern U.S. history began when NFL All-Star and rising actor O.J. Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her alleged lover, Ron Goldman, were found stabbed to death outside her L.A. condo. During the eight-year-long marriage, Simpson had been accused more than once of spousal abuse and had been to court over it. They divorced in 92, got back together briefly, and then broke up again. But the entire case would go from odd to bizarre to full-on insane in the following 15 months. First, a week after the deaths, Simpson was scheduled to turn himself in, but instead he led the police on a long, low-speed chase across L.A. in a borrowed Ford Bronco. Simpson's guest house was occupied by the mind-bending Cato Kalin. Simpson's attorney was a caricature of a man in the person of Johnny Cochran, who made the case about a police cover-up and racial hatred. The prosecutor and lead detective, and even Judge Lance Ito, all became actors in The Lunacy, a thing that paralleled, quite disturbingly, the rise of reality TV in the early 90s. It was crazy. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.